He touched me. He touched me. The Lord my God has touched my soul. Something is happening. And now I know he touched me and made me whole. He touched me. He touched me. The Lord my God had made me whole. Hey. Something has happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Let your living waters flow so by my soul. Let the Holy Spirit come and take control in every situation that a stroll through. Oh, Father, 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 and to Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jesus, angel, Holy Ghost, Spirit, Lord, Spirit, Spirit. It's our Father, King of Glory, will be a blessing to your life. Because of the Holy Spirit in our life, we'll be able to understand the contextual meaning of the Word of God. With the Holy Spirit in our life, will be able to teach us aright and guide us because Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher. Father, we ask that you descend your spirit into our midst, descend your spirit into the heart of your children, that they will be able to understand what we are about to talk today, that the Holy Spirit will teach us into the deeper things. Hallelujah. Yes, I welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Holy Spirit, the great teacher, teach us his words today. We do not know how to teach. We do not know how to pray, but the Holy Spirit prays within us. He groan with words. He groan with groans with words that cannot be expressed. And so we call upon him to teach us his words this afternoon. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, I want us to discuss a critical topic. Yes, where can we run from? Where can we run? How far can we run from God? How, can, how far can we run away from God? Yes. Remember, God is the creator of the universe. He created heaven and earth. He created Adam and Eve and gave us the breath of life. He created us in his own image. And he created us with, 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 with great potentials. He created us with great ability to think like him. He created us in his image. In his image, he created Adam and Eve. And we are the descendants of Adam and Eve. He created us in his image to think like him. And so because God is our creator, he has overwhelming control over our life. He has overwhelming control over our destiny. We can never achieve anything without him. Yes, we can never achieve anything without him. Because before you were born, because you and I were born, we, we were predestined. God knows us right from our mother's womb. God knows us. He knows how far we're going to go on earth. And he has given us perspective. He gave us heart to worship him. How far can we run away from God? This evening, I'm going to use the case of Jonah as a case, case study. Remember Jonah that God sent to Nineveh to preach the words to Nineveh. Jonah, for personal reason, for personal, I mean, decision, probably family interference, probably peers interference, Refuse the command of God. And he thought he can run away from God. He thought he can abandon the assignment God has given to him. 
Many, many of us today, many of us who are called, we want to please ourselves before we submit ourselves to the will of the, this evening. Many of us, when God gives us an assignment, we said to ourselves, we want to do what we like first. We want to defy the assignment of God for our life. We tell God, God, give me time. Let me get rich first before I do your assignment. God, let me get married first. When I get married, then I cannot submit myself to your authority. God, let me buy my new car first so that after I buy my new car, I can submit to your authority. God, I want to be very rich first. I want to be comfortable. I don't want to serve you. I don't want to work for you as a poor man. So God, let me work hard first and make my money. And when I get my money, I can now serve you. I want you to use the case of Jonah as a case study. How far can you run away from God? How far, how far can you and I run away from God? And I've come to remind you right now, when you run away from the work of God, when you run away from the assignment of God, ask you, how far can you run away? Can you stand the implication? Can you stand the repercussion? When the wrath of God begins to fall upon you, will you be able to stand, use Jonah as a case study? Yes, because there is nowhere we can run away from. The eyes of the Lord is upon us. He searches us. He said, how far can we run away from him? I want us to open the book of Jonah, chapter 1, from verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amita. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. This is the instruction of God to Jonah. Go to Nineveh and preach to them because their wickedness, their act of disobedience, their sinful life has come unto me. God saw any other person, but he chose to send Jonah. God saw any other person around, but he chose to, to choose Jonah to go for that assignment. But Jonah thought he can play God. Jonah thought he can run away from God. Jonah thought he can dribble God. Jonah thought his power and his might, he had the authority to do anything concerning himself. He thought he, he owned his power. He thought he owned himself. He thought he can do anything by himself. He thought he can run away from the face of God. Listen to what Jonah did. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tashi. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the ticket, after paying the fear, he went aboard and sailed for Tashi to flee from the sight of God. After God has commanded Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach the gospel, the Bible says, Jonah, Jonah said to himself, I'm not going to listen to what God says. I'm not going to obey God. I have my life to live. I cannot go and face this wicked Nineveh people. But I go there, they might kill me, and so I'm not going to risk my life. Yes, many of us, God has given an assignment. God has asked you to go out and preach the gospel and win so. But you said you are afraid for your life. You are afraid for your life, and so you cannot preach the gospel. You are ashamed of the gospel. You fear man instead of fearing God. You disobey God and abandon your assignment. And you told God, I cannot go. I cannot do it. I cannot do it. I'm going to move my life because I don't want to risk my life. I don't want to die. Those people are wicked. How can you send me to those people so that I'll kill you. I, I will die because I'm serving you. You want me to die because I want to preach the gospel. That was exactly what Jonah did. He thought, it's like you traveling from Lagos to, God asks you from Lagos, go to Abuja. And you look for flight, you run away to Sierra Leone. Or you run away to Gambia. Or you run away to South Africa. Be believing, thinking in your heart that God cannot see you when you travel to Canada. Or when you travel to, 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 to South Africa. Or in Ghana here, God said, okay, come on my son. I'm sending you from Accra. Go to Kumasi and preach my gospel. And you said to yourself, I'm not going to go to Kumasi. The Kumasi is too far. I don't want to risk my life. I don't want to jeopardize my, 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 my personality. So you took a bus. You run to a flower border. You want to run to Togo or to run to the Republic of Benin. My dear, who told you that the eyes of the Lord cannot locate you where you find yourself? Even if you fly to the deep sea, the Lord is there. You fly on the most high the sky. How, 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 no matter how high the sky may be, the Lord is there. Right from the bottommost part of the world, even in the deep sea, the eyes of the Lord is there, watches over you and looking at you. Oh, come on. 
Jonah thought he can run away from the sight of God. He thought he can abandon his assignment. He thought he can abandon the role of God for his life. He thought, he, but Jonah never knew that God wanted to use him to save the, the Ninefian, the people of Nineveh, and also bless him. Many of us, we abandon our blessing. We forfeit our blessing because we disobey God. We didn't know the plans of God for our life. Remember, God cannot use you and abandon you. When God uses you, he bless you. But Jonah did not know this. And many of us too, we do not know this. We, we, we are thinking of what we're going to gain by serving God today. We don't know. We cannot imagine. We don't have the foresight to know the plans of God for us in the future. God says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. When God gives an assignment, he gives you the enablement. He gives you the authority. He gives you the power. He gives you the wherewithal. He gives you the material that you need to serve and to accomplish that assignment for him positively and successfully. God cannot give you an assignment without giving you the rudiment, without giving you the instrument without giving it away with that to carry out that assignment. Jonah found it as error. Jonah erred, <clears throat> just like many of us erred today. You abandon the assignment of God in your life. God called you to be a great man of God. You said, no, 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 I can't do the work of God. How can I carry Bible? I'm sent. My father sent me to university to become a lawyer. My father sent me to university to become a chartered accountant. My father sent me to university to become a prominent politician. So why should I carry Bible? Why should I go to my village and preach the gospel? Why should I go to the town hall and preach the gospel? Come on. Do you know who you are before God? Have you forgotten that God knew you before you were born? Even from your mother's womb, God knew you. What Jonah did and God God. Many of us, we offend God in our actions. Many of us, we offend God by disobeying him. Many of us, God has sent you to your family to be a pillar in your family, to be a deliverer in your family. Just as God sent Moses to, to Egyptian, to, I mean to the Israelites, to be their deliverer. God has sent you to your family to be a deliverer. God has sent you to that office to be a deliverer. God has sent you to your country to be a believer. But you said, I cannot do it. I don't have what it takes to do the work of God. I don't have what it takes to go and confront those people because like Jonah yes you've got what it takes God has given you that ability that great potential is in you Moses said I cannot do it but God said come on you can do it your brother Aaron is there he will, he will support you because God cannot call you without giving you what it takes to carry out that assignment he's a, he's a maker he created you he got everything he got every ability he got all the facility he provide everything that you need to make you a successful worker in his vineyard Jonah thought he escaped God. But unknown to him, God's eyes was upon him. Just as God's eyes is looking at you and me today. That assignment God has given you in your church. How are you, how are you doing it? You have been sent to that man of God to support him. But you said you, you, you don't want to do it. You have been sent to that village to preach the gospel and save your family. You said you cannot do it. You are afraid. They were going to kill you. Yes, you are afraid. God has sent you to that town, to that village, to preach the gospel and be an agent of change, agent of transformation, agent of renewal. God has sent you to be a savior to your family, but you say you cannot do it. Just like, 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 like Jonah, you are afraid they're going to kill you. Why are you so afraid of the one who can kill the flesh, but who cannot kill the soul? Oh my God. Do you know that? God is the owner of your soul. You've got what it takes to represent him. You've got what it takes to be a winner. You've got what it takes to be a champion of the Lord. You've got what it takes to be a conqueror when God sent you out. Remember, when God sent the apostles out, he sent about 70 plus out in twos. He gave them the backing. God supported them. Jesus supported them. They came back with good news. Demon bowed at their feet. Why? Because they obey the command of God. They went out with authority. And they came back successful. But you and me, we are running away from God's work. Many of us handle the work of God as if it doesn't concern us. But you know the way you handle your business in the office. You remember, you know the way you handle your work in the market. You know how long, how, how early you leave your house to the market to sell your goods. But you know the time you go to the house of God to do the work of God. Because you think God is not looking at you. Because you think you have nothing to gain while working for God. But I have come to tell you from personal experience and from what the Bible says, you cannot, you cannot work for God and you will be cast away. You will be duly rewarded. For Jesus says, I am coming soon and my reward is coming with me to give to, 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 to whoever according to what they have done. There is reward 
for good service. There is reward for good works. There is reward for dedication. There is reward for loyalty. There is reward for commitment. There is reward for dedication. And there's also reward for disobedience. I pray that God will give you the grace and the spirit for you to understand what God wants you to do at any time, at any moment. Yes, 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 yes. I remember the song in the Salvation Army. He said, I want to live right. That God may use me at any time, at any way. Yes, I want to live right. That God may use me at any time, at any way. I want to live right. That God may use me at any time, at any way. Jonah thought he has escaped. <laughs> do, do not thought he has he has he has deceived God. <laughs> Jonah thought that the eyes of the Lord cannot find him out. Let's read further and find out what happened. Verse four, Jonah chapter one verse four. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm across the sea, and the ships threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God. And they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. God was angry. And he struck the sea with a violent storm. And the ship was about to break into two. There was pandemonium. Everybody in the ship was so afraid. Because they knew that anger of God had descended of them. And they knew that there is somebody among them who have offended God. There is somebody among them who have disobeyed God. Who is that Jonah in your family? Fetch him out. <laughs> Otherwise, there's a great problem in that family. Who is that Jonah in that church? Fetch him out. Fetch her out. Let him correct himself. Let him correct herself. So that all of you will not be punished. There was a great part of the in the sheep. Because of one person, Jonah. And everybody started asking, who is he that have offended God among us? Because we know this can never happen if none of us have offended God. At long last, Jonah recognized and came up boldly, that I am the one. I thought I can run away from God. I thought I can escape the calling of God upon my life. Throw me inside the sea. Yes, and when Jonah was thrown inside the sea, the storm calmed. But do you know one thing? Immediately Jonah was thrown inside the sea. What happened? A big fish swallowed him. We hear Jonah said he will not go. <laughs> Amazing God, awesome God, great God. We hear Jonah said he will not go. Jonah spent three days and three nights inside the fish. And on the third day, the fish vomited Jonah at the seashore of Nineveh, where he vowed never to go. May you not pass through what Jonah passed through before you carry out the assignment of God. May you not pass through fire before you submit to serve your God. May you not pass through the belly of a fish for three days <laughs> and three nights before you say, oh God, I surrender. Jonah thought he can escape from the service of God. Jonah thought he can choose to disobey the commandments of God. Jonah thought he can treat God with levity. He has forgotten that <laughs> God oversees the entire universe. There is nowhere we can run away from God. How far can we run away from his presence? The assignment that Jonah could have done quietly and received great blessings and appreciation from God by thunder and by fire, he was forced to carry it out. Right inside the belly of the fish, Jonah prayed unto God <laughs> because it was like a prison yard. Right inside a fish, Jonah prayed and started asking for forgiveness. At long last, Jonah carried out the assignment God has given to him. Preaching 
to the nine of it. My dear brothers and sisters, what is it that God has asked you to do in your church? What is that assignment that God has given to you and they are running away from? Some of you, you may not necessarily be an evangelist, but you have been called to support your pastor, to support your church with your substance, with what God has given to you. That is your assignment, but you are running away from it. <laughs> For some of you believe that when you support the bishop, when you support your pastor, it is the pastor who will benefit from it. And so you don't want to do anything in the house of God. How far can you run away from God? You have been called to be an evangelist in your church to preach the gospel and win soul and grow your church. But you said to yourself, if I should do that, the pastor will benefit. And so you fold your hands when you go to church. You don't want to do anything. My dear brothers and sisters, remember Judah. How far can you run away from God? Even some commit sins. They do a lot of things, abominable things, thinking that God does not see them. Remember Judah. How far can you run away from God? God will locate you wherever you run to. Even at the deep sea, God will locate you. Even above the sky, God will locate you. Yes, even in the deep forest, God will locate you. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let's use the example, the, 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 the case study of Judah, to address our life. When you disobey God, we bring curse upon our lives. When you obey God, you attract blessings upon your life. God can never use you and abandon you. Mark my words. Yes, God can never use you and abandon you. He will use you and glorify his name in your life. Check all the prophets of, of God in the Bible. Check all the apostles. They were used by God. And God glorified his name in their life because they obeyed. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That is what the Bible says. What God has asked you to do, he knows the reason why he has chosen you and not someone else. And he's not just choosing you to use you and abandon you. He wants to use you and glorify his name in your life. He wants you to be a blessing to your family, to be a blessing to your country, to be a blessing to your generation and generation yet unborn. He wants you to be even a blessing to yourself. So we say, is it carrying Bible and preaching the Bible we're going to eat? Have you forgotten that God is a great provider? He will provide your needs. And as much as you serve God with your strength, with your might, and with your heart faithfully, God will provide what you're going to eat. As a greater provider. Yes, the wealth of the nation will come to you because you have served God faithfully from your heart without any reservation. You serve God without any reservation. You serve God in spirit and in truth. God will supply your needs. Have you forgotten what the Bible says in Philippians? For my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. That is the promise God has given to you when you do the work of God conscientiously with your heart, without looking back, without having any, any ulterior motive. When you see the mission of Christ as your mission, remember Luke 19 verse 10 tells all, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save those that are lost. That is our responsibility. When God has called you to go out and preach the gospel, why do you say, I cannot do it? Why do you say it's meant for people who are called? Who told you you are not called? You are called. You are specially made. Come on. Don't be like Jonah. Carry your garment right now. Put on the armor of faith. Put on the armor of, of, of righteousness. And go ahead without divine assignment. You will succeed. Yes, you will succeed. But I will, God bless you. You will succeed. Keep preaching the word of God. Keep doing good. Yes, my Bible says, how do we know children of God and those who are the children of Satan? Anyone who fails to do what is right is not a child of God. That's what the Bible says. That little thing that God has asked you to do in that ministry, do it faithfully without pleasing. Don't be a man pleaser, man. Please God. Jesus says, I have come to do the will of my Father. Yes. Yes. And so you should emulate him. Apostle Paul says, Follow my example as I follow the example of my Lord Jesus Christ. Follow the example of Jesus Christ. And you will see great 
miracle upon your life. You'll see a turning point upon your life. There'll be a turning around upon your life. I see God lifting you up today in the mighty name of Jesus. I see God doing a new thing in your life as you have decided to carry your cross and follow Jesus Christ. Whatever assignment God has given to you, don't abandon it. Come on, go ahead and do it right. Not just doing it, do it right. And let it be good result. The apostles went out to preach the gospel. When Jesus Christ commanded them, they came back with good results. You should be able to come back with good results to your ministry. Support your leader. Support your pastor. Support your, your senior pastor. Grow the church of God. When you grow the church of God, you are growing your life. But when you leave the assignment, when you leave the, the growth of the church alone to the pastor, you are blessing the pastor and you are cursing yourself because you are claiming to be what you are not. Many of us bear title in church, but we don't work. Our work does not show the type of title we have. How can I be an evangelist who cannot win so? How can I be a deacon and deaconess who come to church without bringing any soul to church? If Christ's mission is your mission, you will win soul every day. The Bible says, he who wins soul is wise. Only a wise Christian wins soul. Because you know, that is, the heart. That is what will touch the heart of God. That is what will make heavens rejoice when a sinner is brought into the temple of God. Hallelujah. You have listened to the story of Jonah. Search yourself right now, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't act like Jonah. Don't think about yourself. Don't think about what you're going to eat tomorrow. Don't think about what you're going to wear. What think, don't think about your accommodation. The Lord will provide. If the Lord could provide for the best of the air. I've seen some beds around me here. Can you, can you believe? Can you, do you understand how they eat? God provides for them. Even in the fish, the fish in the sea. Can you imagine how they eat? God provides food for them. How much more you that have been created in the image of God, do you think God will just abandon you? He will care for you. He will provide for you. Yes, I love singing the Lord. I composed a song many years ago, and I think I have it on my new record. Yes, I cast my bed in unto Jesus. Jesus cares for me and lean on him. He saved my life. Jesus cares for me. No matter the pain and pain I've been through. Jesus cares for me even when no money in my pocket. Jesus cares for me and my landlord sacked me from his house. Jesus cares for me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus cares for me. Jesus cares for you. When you serve him in spirit and in truth, he provides for you. He provides accommodation. He put money into your pocket. He puts food on your table. He puts shoes on your feet. And he gave you a good family. Come on. What are you thinking about? Hallelujah. Some are waiting until they become multi billionaire before they start preaching the gospel. They tell, oh, come on, God, hold on first until I get money. Then I can serve you. I can worship you. Some will say, I need accommodation. God, provide accommodation for me. I cannot be a pastor and I'm renting house here and there. Come on, God, give me a house and I will worship you and I will serve you and I will preach the gospel. Some will say, come on, God, I want to get married. Give me the good wife. Give me a good husband. Then I'll start serving you. My friend, do you know that you do not own your life? Don't you know that age is no longer on your side? <laughs> what is the possibility, if you are 15 today, if you are 50 years old today, what is the probability that you are still going to live another 15 more years? Why do you procrastinate? Why do you delay? Why do you give God condition? Before you serve him. Why do you give God condition before you work for him? Why do you give God condition? Don't you know that he is your, he is your anchor? He knows everything about your life. Remember God's time is always the best. Not your time. Many of us want to serve God according to our own time. Many of us want to worship God according to their, our own preparation. Many of us want to serve God, want to worship God according to their, our own will. We go to church anytime we like, not at the exact time that the church authority have asked us to come. You pay your tithes when you like, not according to the laid down rules of the church. 
You go to church when you are, you go to church service on Sunday when you are less busy. Your busy time is on the clubhouse every weekend. You only come run, rush, rush down to the church when you have problems. You rush to the church when you have, situa- when you have ugly situation. You run to the church because your, your daughter is sick. You run to the church because your, 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 your managing director is fighting you in the office. It's only when you got problems that you remember your God. Come on. How are you? Be careful the way you live your life. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1 says, Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Don't allow influence, negative influence, peer group influence to affect your life and debar you from knowing God, knowing your creator. Your father does not create you. He was not, he's not your creator. Your mommy is not your creator. God created you. Remember him when you are in your youthful days. Spend your time for God. Go to the house of God. Get yourself involved. If you can sing, join the choir of choristers. If you can want to be an usher, be part of the usher. Evangelical team is there. Get yourself involved in any of the church activities. Prepare yourself for a greater future. Remember, you are the future leader. You've got to prepare yourself. You've got to position yourself for leadership role in future. Hallelujah. And don't forget, all these things can be achieved to the power of the Holy Spirit. Be spirit-filled. For the Bible says to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Be spiritual, my brother. Don't gratify your flesh. But grow in spirit every day. Draw closer to God every day. Draw closer to Jehovah every day. Draw closer to your creator every day. Grow in spirit. Feel the presence of the Lord every day in what I would do. Yes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That is what my Bible says. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you, my daughter, Grace Akute. You are blessed for life. Bishop Osman, God bless you. Thank you so much. Yes. Reverend Gossin Apiakobi, God bless you. Thanks for watching. I bless all of you in the name of the Lord God. I release his abundant grace upon your life as you work so hard to grow the ministry of God, to continue the mandate of Jesus Christ. May God lift you up in the name of Jesus. May God grant you all, all it takes to finish your race well. You will finish your race rest well like Apostle Paul in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Don't forget, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. The message is for you. The message is for me. Ensure that you involve in the things of God. Don't abandon his work. Don't behave like Jonah. It is a curse to disobey God. I want to end here, my dear brothers and sisters. But I pray that the Holy Spirit that have led me to preach this message to you will be released upon your life because without the Holy Spirit, we cannot obey God. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot preach His gospel. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot pray. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot love. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot preach the gospel and receive good result. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot be good Christian. Holy Spirit, the comforter, the great teacher, is what we need. And I've prayed today, as you have listened to that words, may God release the Spirit upon your life to guide and direct you. That each time that God gives us an assignment, we will not run away like Judah. We will accomplish it. We will run the race well, and we will end the race well. And at the end of the day, at the end of our journey on earth, we will wear the crown of glory. Thank you, Lord, for this ones who have listened to me. Father, bless them. Father, equip them. Father, solve their problem. Take away their pain and their worries. Heal them of all infirmities. And lift them up. Grant them grace to run the race well and end the race well. Help them to build their ministry on the foundation of truth. God told Peter, you are the rock. Upon this rock, I will build my church. You listening to me, you are the rock of your ministry. Upon you, the church of God, 
shall be built. Thank you again for listening to me. My name is Bishop Itakayo De Falarumo, the presiding bishop at Weakness International Church, Accra, Ghana. I'm a Nigerian, but living in Ghana for 19 years. Please share this message to all your friends and family. And in case you want to send a prayer request, you can send it through WhatsApp or message to plus 233-244-879810. Thanks so much. God bless you. Remember, how far can we run from God? Shalom. Amen.